Look at that front rod. That front rod is buried, man. That front rod is buried. Oh man, that's a good one. Oh, that's a nice flathead, man. Nice flathead right there. Hi y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, check that out right there. Beautiful sunrise coming up on the Tennessee River. And that means two things, y'all. One, we've survived another night. Two, I'm running late. <laughs> so we're missing out on the sunrise bite as I flap my gums here. But I'm making my way down river. We're gonna go down here and start fishing today in a deep hole. Historically, this time of year on the Tennessee River, deep holes are where it's at so we're gonna see if there's any big fish swimming down there today i've got a cooler full of fresh bait that i'm ready to feed them so come with me y'all let's go see if we can find us some big cats oh buddy nice takedown nice takedown right here nice takedown that's on a bluegill head y'all bluegill head that bait i had it behind me i've got two baits suspended off the front right now and I've been on a recent road trip. I had some dragging rigs tied on. I didn't, I forgot to switch everything over to suspended. So I just put my dragon sinkers on, cast them out behind me. And this bait was sitting there, man, this feels like solid fish. Even though they're dragging rigs, I'm stationary. I'm just spot locked right here. We've got a little bit of current flow this morning. And so my scent is kind of getting pushed down deeper into this hole. And this, I mean, this feels like a solid fish, man. This was a bluegill head. It was a bluegill probably in that seven, seven and a half inch range. He feels really good. <laughs> I've had lines in now for, oh, oh, oh. I got one after this front rod here. I can't fool with him right now. We gotta deal with one in the hand. Something's ate that bait up front though and come up in the water column. I've had lines in now for probably close to 30 minutes. Just been sitting here, hanging out, waiting, putting some time into this spot. I thought I'd start here at the top of this hole, maybe work back farther into it. And then if that didn't pan out, then I'd start just trolling my way back upstream against the current. Just kind of mix things up today, try to try to get on some fish here, y'all. That's, that's the goal, whatever it takes today. <laughs> Don't matter to me how or where they want to bite. We just want to, we want to get hold of them. This one here is going to be pretty good. Fish number one is going to be a, feels like he's going to be a whopper. That other fish up front, oh man, he's pulling hard. That other fish that's hit the front rod, he is, my line slack up there. It looks like he's come back this way. These two are liable to get wrapped around each other be about par for the course <laughs> that'd be all right though we'll work it out if it does yeah oh no what has going on here what is going on here this fish is oh my front line I don't even know what's happening here, y'all. I see I see part of my my front line. I guess this fish somehow got in my front line. I don't even know how that happened. But he's all he's a pretty good fish. He's a fun sizer. I don't even know what's happened here. <laughs> I've only got one fish on for sure though. My other bait is wrapped all around this fish. Well, if these fish can find a way to tangle you up, they're going to they gonna get it done, ain't they? Well, come up here, fish. Let's, let's get this mess undone that you've caused here. I don't even know. I don't even know how he got in that front line. I mean, I was fighting him, pulling him this way. It's a mystery of the universe. Okay. Come on up in here, fish. Goodness gracious, what a mess he's caused. I don't even know how the heck he's done it. But we got him. That's a solid fish for fish number one. Ate the bluegill head. Now hold yourself up there, fish. Nice, man. Nice fish for fish number one. I'll take it. Said, I don't know how the heck he got that front line. 
I think a fish probably hit it and swam backwards, got into him. The other fish come off and he just ended up, well, I guess, who knows, we'll never know. Either way, solid fish here. For fish number one, get on out of here, buddy. Little troublemaker. But yeah, y'all, that one hit a, a bluegill head. I got skipjack and bluegill with me today. And like I said, I forgot to, I'd planned on suspending four rods out here, but I'd forgot to switch my other two rods over. I had dragging rigs on them from a, another recent trip. Forgot to switch everything over. And since I was running late getting out here, I said, heck with it. I'll just put my dragon sinkers on and cast those baits behind me since we got some current out here to kind of keep everything taut with my lines. And I'll just suspend two off the front. And uh, well, that fish there, he ate my dragging rig that wasn't dragging, it was just stationary. So I'm gonna get this mess sorted out. We'll put us another bluegill head on the dragon rig, cast it back out. I still got my, I don't know if you can see that there on camera, I still got my skipjack rig here that's on the front rod. I just gotta get this mess untangled. We'll drop it back down. But I got a, a skipjack head and a skipjack chunk suspended off the front, bluegill head and body chunk off the back. And I'm just gonna sit here for probably another 20, 30 minutes, see if we get some more action. If not, we'll slide back down into this hole to see if well, there's some more fish down in there we can kind of work our way back to. And then probably get on the move. There is some current flow, so won't be able to suspend baits as we troll into the current because it'll bring them too high, too high up in the water column, but we can drag off the back going into the current. So that'll be the plan this morning, y'all. But let me quit flapping my gums. I can't get nothing done while I'm sitting here talking. So let's get back to it. Well, let's cut us another bluegill here. That bluegill head got it done. I'm typically not a fan of bluegill, but I decided to keep a few on a recent ultralight trip and I had done pretty good on bluegill on a recent trip over to North Carolina. So I said, what the heck, you know, give us some variety out here today. We'll take this bluegill head to stick it on the hook and get it back out there. This is, this is my dragon rig. That's a 10 aught size circle hook above that i got a floating rattle and a little bit higher up than that i've got my dragon sinker on a three-way rig i'm just gonna stand up here in the kayak we're gonna toss that out there behind us a little bit and we'll let out some line we'll take current take it back a little bit and I've already got my suspended bait back down there since that fish, man, I don't know how they, I still, it's a mystery of the universe how those two rods got tangled up together. But either way, we got the mess sorted out. We back in the game now, so we'll kick back, relax, wait on the next fish. Another nice takedown there on the bluegill. Bluegill head getting it done. I'm having to wonder right now, is it the bait or the location? Because assuming these fish are deeper down in this hole and they're coming forward as they pick up on my scent, these two back rods with them being cast behind me, those are going to be the first baits that they come to. So I'm wondering, either way, it doesn't matter. As long as I'm getting bit, I don't care what to eat. But it's just odd that historically speaking for this body of water bluegill just isn't as good a bait as skipjack and my skipjack ain't been touched yet other than that one fish that i assume had hit that front bait while we were reeling in the last one something crazy went on with it but otherwise skipjack's been pretty much not messed with but the bluegill now's got two fish this one here's a significantly smaller than his friend Oh goodness, Did he gets y'all wet, he got me good. Right in a right in a kisser, man. In the kisser in the eyeball. Fish, you gon' you gonna regret the day you done that. I'm gonna cut your camera time short because of that. Oh Lord, he's done it again. I just wiped my face off. I'll be doggone if he didn't get me spoken wet again, doggone you. Come up here now.
I've had enough of this fish. I've had enough of it. He's a he's a larger dink, smaller fun size, but he blew his chance at any camera time. That's all you getting. You ain't getting no front camera time, you old fish. A name, a drop of water on the lens. How did you all, I got hit twice. I'm still tripping. And y'all didn't get hit at all. <laughs> I don't know how that happens. Anyway, let's get the camera back in chest. We're gonna put another bait on there. He threw the he threw the bluegill head off, so we'll just we'll just grab us another one here and stick on there. This is a little bit smaller bluegill here, but we'll just kind of we'll kind of cut it in half, and I'm gonna take these scissors too and trim them fins a little bit there. They don't serve no purpose in a piece of cut bait, so. Well, at least, at least that fish there didn't cause us no tangles, so didn't delay us other than just splashing me right in the face, man. Got me twice. That fish had it in for me. I don't know what I ever done to that fish other than trying to make him famous. All right, just like that, folks. Back out it goes. I'm just let that let out some line there. I'm going to dry my hands off, and we're right back in the game. We'll look right there. Looks like a bigger mark up there, about the 48, 50 foot mark. Let's expand that out. Yeah. There's definitely, there's some fish here in the area. You know, the bite's not been lights out for the catfish yet, just two fish and a little over 30 minutes, but there's clearly some here. I got one after this bluegill head again here, y'all. I can see my rod tip moving. He's acting like, He's acting like he might have it. Let me just, yeah, we just caught up with him right there, buddy. He's got it now. Man, bluegill head getting it done, y'all. What is up with this? Boy, that was a big splash. I don't know if that got on camera or not. I don't know what the heck that was. I didn't see it before it plopped back down. I hope that got on camera. Yeah, bluegill head getting it done. Yeah, I'm sitting here 58 feet. It drops off a little deeper here behind me. And this bait, my sinker with these rigs are on bottom, but I've got that float, so my baits are up off the bottom, just kind of like a suspended rig with it just sitting there. But I bet it's because this is probably the first bait that they're coming to out of this hole. And this fish here is thump, doggone it. It never fails. Whatever the hot bait is, you're going to run out quick. Because this fish is throwing it off too. Well, that one there is another one that ain't, ain't big enough to be front camera worthy, but especially not so since he threw our bluegill head off. Man, again, it never fails. Whatever bait is working, you're going to run out of it quick, fast, and in a hurry. I think I got one or two more bluegill in there that we ain't cut yet so uh at least we're guaranteed one more fish most likely if that's the bait they're wanting we've got action on the front rod up here on the suspended bait yeah he's got it he's got it we're hooked up all right finally we finally got something going here on the skipjack on the front lines I'm in all bluegill head to this point. And, and you know, the funny thing is about the bluegill head getting eaten is I've got the bluegill chunk on this other rod. Same rig, same setup. It ain't been touched. It's all it's all been that bluegill head before this chunk right here of skipjay. That's a small fish right there too. That's that and right there. I wish I'd rather have the bait back than this fish. <laughs> yo, yo thing, give me that bait. Why are you throwing the bait off every time you, you bite today? Well, another dinkity doodah, but it is another bite. This hole, get on back down there. I command you to do it, fish. That fish says he don't take orders from me, by gosh, but these these fish that are clearly in this hole, this is just a, a pattern out here on Tennessee River, at least the sections I fish anyway. Every late summer, post-spawn time period, these deep holes all up and down the river. 
you just find blue cats in flatheads too no flatheads out here today but it's just a productive area this one's paying off too well here's the next suspended bait going down let me turn that way so you can see it so that's just a chunk of skipjack with the gut pocket intact i've got a catfish sumo bait stalker fly dangling there under it eight ounce sinker there up top and the current flow it's moving but it's light enough that eight ounce sinker will keep my my line just vertical down under me so when i set my my depth here it's not getting raised up too far so there's my sinker on bottom you reel up my slack there so right there's my rod tip kind of down in the water with that sinker reel down a little bit raise up and stick it in the rod holder so now my bait and fly they're there a couple three feet off the bottom not an exact science doesn't really matter you just want it close to the bottom so as these fish swim along that bait's kind of right there in their face right there just easy for them to snatch up as they move along so i'm just going to keep setting here y'all as long as i'm getting bit i ain't moving this dang bluegill head had something after it again well something had hit me i swear i think that rod tip's still moving let me just oh he's on there yep yeah. it hit it and come toward me this was my last bluegill head unless i've got one hiding down in that cooler i looked when i pulled this one out so hopefully this fish is kind enough to leave it on the hook but if he's like his friends they're stingy today sometimes they be like that he ain't very big either it's just it's got to be something with these baits just being the first ones that they're coming to that's got to be i may put on a piece of skipjack that's actually what i'm gonna do y'all since i'm out of bluegill heads and i got a chunk on the other bluegill chunk on the other rod we'll put a skipjack head on this dragon setup and cast it out and see is it the bait or is it uh, the location we're about to run an experiment on your people down there, fish. What do you think about that? He, he don't think at all. That fish ain't never thought a day in his life. All right, let's get our bait on there. Do it again. Well, let's send that skipjack head back there and test our little experiment, why don't we? Let that hit bottom. Engage our reel, and we are set again, folks. Again, I ain't gonna move till these fish quit biting. No point in it, you know. Don't leave fish to go find fish. I've made that stake way too many times in my life. Way too many. We just cast out that skipjack head, and these fish said, heck with that. We'll finally come over here and eat this bluegill chunk now. He's got it. There's weight on there. I knew he'd hit it. <laughs> these fish, they run out of bluegill heads to eat, so now they start eating the chunk. I think it's just gonna be another dink though. That's kind of been the story with me and bluegill historically. I haven't caught a lot of big fish on, at least here anyway. But you catch numbers of fish on it. We'll get this one up here and take a look at him. I'm pretty sure he's probably about the same size as them last couple fish we've reeled in, but at least he ate the chunk. We do still have them other other chunks of bluegill yeah he's, he's comparable size there it's another bite though <clears throat> it's some action well, there that old ugly devil is get on out of here yo dink oh 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 right here y'all right here look at that front rod that front rod is buried man that front rod is buried oh man that's a good one. Oh man he's pulling drag too come on get out of that rod holder Oh man, I never felt him hit. I just looked up and my rods doubled over right there as we're landing that dink. Oh man. That's on the chunk, a skipjack chunk. Let me reel that line in right there so we don't get him wrapped up in. Yeah, buddy. Oh man, this feels good right here. Boy, when they take a rod down like that and just sit there, just doubled over man you know you got something good on them smaller fish can take it over for a second but they don't take it down and stay down with it nice man i never felt it i guess i was distracted 
while I was fooling with that other fish, I never felt him hit. Y'all probably saw it before I did. <laughs> I think he's a blue. I feel him rolling. Sometimes they sneak up on you like that. It's a flathead. But no, this one's a blue. I see him right there. That's another fun size. I thought he was a little bigger than that when I saw that rod tip go over. I'll take it though, man. That's a solid fish. Skipjack chunk. Let's get this and let's get this and landed. And then we gotta get some baits down there, man. We're running out. I'm losing my britches here as I stand up. Well, we'll be giving these people and these houses over here a show if my britches come down. I'll be wrecking marriages. Them poor women will be out there having having hot flashes. They'll be sweating out there. They see that. Well, that one's a fun size length. But not much weight to him. Probably pretty recent off the spawn here. The spawn here is pretty much over uh, in my area. It's just a matter now of these fish getting out here, feeding up, getting some weight back on them. And this one here is still, he's not really beat up, but he's real skinny. So you can tell he's pretty recent off the nest. But anyway, we got to get him going. Get out of here, fish. Get the heck out of here. We'll do it again someday. So we got to get some more baits on. I'm going to put another chunk up here on the suspended bait we got other skipjack heads so i'm gonna i'm gonna put a bluegill chunk back here on this rod since it finally got eat we'll work our way through that bluegill out here but uh, man i tell you this pattern this summertime pattern here on the tennessee river hitting these deep holes and i'm, I'm just at the top edge of this one uh it works man it works out here like clockwork every year it's just one of them patterns you can kind of set your watch to it when these fish come off the nest up in the shallows they move out here to the deeper structure getting these deeper holes a day like today where we got a little bit of current flow not a lot but enough to get our scent trail moving current's a big help but uh yeah yeah we own them so we're gonna take a chunk of skipjack now i'm just gonna take the rest of this bluegill here I'm gonna just cut its tail off and we'll do some we'll do some trimming on these fins here just for just for my peace of mind if nothing else so we'll get that down there on our dragon rig we're gonna put this one on our suspended rig I gotta get me some these you know what the problem is these scissors these are right-handed scissors and I'm left-handed what I do I turn them upside down that helps me cut with them there's you a little life hack people for you left-handers out there that don't want to buy special left-handed scissors we shouldn't have to buy left-handed scissors if you ask me but this is what it is the world's against us left-handers us old south paws all right this one here going back down 58 feet deep we're gonna have it down there 55 56 feet deep that piece of bluegill I'll cast out. We'll have it on bottom, but floated up off bottom behind us there. And then we're going to be set and ready for the next fish. Got our skipjack head on that dragon rod eat now. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I think that kind of proves what I was thinking, y'all. It was the location of the bait more than the bait itself. It's just as that current pushes the scent down, those fish are in the hole, these back rods are the first baits they're gonna come to. Either way, it's a good thing because we're out of bluegill heads. So I'm glad they're willing to eat this bait. <laughs> it never fails though. Whatever bait's getting hit, that's the one that's gonna run out first. If you short on bait, I can't tell you how many times where I've got to the water and had like one skipjack or one white bass, and it seems like that's all the fish want. Well, this fish felt better than he is. He's got that skipjack head wedged in his mouth. I was probably dragging him in like a five gallon bucket the way his mouth was open there. I don't know how he's got that. He may not even have the hook. He may just have that thing wedged. Look at that thing. It's sideways in his mouth. I'll take that skipjack head back, please. You fish owe me some baits today. Got belly on him. Look at all that. 
Um, I don't even know what that is there, rash or something. Nasty fish, go get you some salve and put on that. Take your Benadryl or something. I'm gonna rehook this skipjack head. We'll go up, up under that gill plate and out this nostril. Meat of that there still looks pretty good, so we'll just send it back out. I'm still, I'm still sitting here. I'm not gonna get on the move until the fish quit biting or it's time to go. And you notice here when I'm casting these baits out, I'm not casting real far behind me there because you know, my plan coming out here today was to suspend four baits, just drop them down directly into the kayak. That's how I like to fish. So when I'm casting these baits out, because I don't want to suspend the dragon rigs, everything get all, tang your, your leader be all tangled up around your sinker and stuff if you just try dropping them vertical down there. But with the current, it'll push that leader there behind the sinker, but I don't need a long cast. And quite honestly, the takedowns are a lot better on the shorter cast. So we'll let it get down there. It's already down there. Just flip that bell over and we're back in the game, y'all. Next bite's coming. Got a barge going by. I had to reel everything up and get out of the way. Y'all remember that movie from back in the 80s or 90s called Wayne's World? They'd be out there playing street hockey and a card come through and they'd say, game off and then the card passed and they'd say game on that's kind of like me with this barge right now so whenever they get on by we'll get back over there and get back after them look right here i'm hooked up man that barge went by i come over here i was refreshing all my baits i just got this one out we already hooked up on it man <laughs> how awesome is that this was a piece of bluegill small piece of bluegill too I'll put a fresh skipjack head on that other back rod and cast it out. And I was working on getting my suspended baits changed out. And this one hit. And it's just got right back on. I'm apparently not in the same place I was before. I'm 61 feet here where I'm at now. So I've, when I've set up over here, I'm apparently farther back in that hole. I thought I'd eyeballed where I was at, but... You know, them little eyeball measurements, they never, they never pan out. Yeah, another, another blue here, about the size that we've been getting, aside from them two larger fun sizers. But it's more action, man. These fish down in this area. And we're gonna sit here and keep catching them if we can. Gotta be careful with this, and that hook is right through the bottom lip there. That's a, that's a finger catching location right there what that is yo old, old fat cat we'll send him on all right well let's get us another piece of bluegill on i think this one right here i believe is our last our last piece so we'll trim up them fins let me cut that tail off help it bleed a little bit there that's a small bait, but that's what that last one eats. So we'll send it out and make use of that bluegill, man. I wish I'd kept a few more now. That bluegill. That bluegill got eat. Well, boy, we've made use of every piece of that bluegill. Every single piece of it. It's hard to believe it's outperformed the skipjack. By gosh, it's happened today, at least thus far. These fish are going to have to learn to like that skipjack because that's all they got left. Unless this fish was kind enough to leave the bait on, which is small pieces it was, I doubt it. It'll probably rip it off. It's like it sometimes, though. Sometimes one bait just gets, just gets hit. But I got a feeling once we, once we only have skipjack on, we still going to just keep catching them with the same frequency i'll put a i got that skipjack head on the other back rod we'll put a chunk on this one yeah that's another small small kitty right there he's still tore up probably from the spawn i'll see a big gash in him unless he's gotten a, a bar fight and loss that could happen too what happened to you fish you tell oh, he ain't gonna tell me He's embarrassed about it. He got the fire whooped out of him, what it looks like here. 
yeah that one right there buddy he's still still gashed up bar fight going bad he picked he picked a fight he couldn't win didn't he? he'll learn to keep that mouth shut i reckon all right well he did throw the bait off so we're gonna put us a chunk of skipjack on and cast it out if you can see with the glare but that's a nice looking mark right there at one of our suspended baits he is sitting right there on it wish he had eat that thing just take one of them rods down you see that oftentimes the live scope though fish will come up there just kind of look at your bait circle around it never touch them see that happen all the time it's one of the blessings and curses of the live scope is that you can see what them fish are and are not doing down there well he ain't acting big enough to take it is he we'll reel him in anyway i guess make his day this fish's dreams are going to come true by getting reeled in on this video he wants he wants y'all to hit the thumbs up and subscribe in case he ever decides to bite again i told him y'all don't like doing that but he wanted me to tell you on his behalf to do that we'll get him up here he can tell you his damn self well, he's being reeled in backwards oh he's got the hook in the mouth but he got himself lassoed around the tail boy listen here you watch and see when i bring him in watch how he acts he's gonna act a fool up in here oh oh lord oh lord fish oh lord oh goodness you done done it this time fish get on out of here that fish was supposed to he worked a deal with me said he'd bite again if i told y'all to hit the like and subscribe i don't care if he bites again acting like that oh look at this back rod look at this back rod i was just putting my bait up where i rebaited on that front rod and this one's just sitting there man that was just sitting there bent over i wonder if that's not a flathead you know, when them rods, when they're just sitting there like that, it could have hit while I was distracted. That's possible, but <laughs> it's just sitting there. Tip of it bent over, buddy. Makes me believe it could be a flatty. This is on that skipjack head on the dragon ring. The dragon rig that ain't dragon. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, this has uh, been a real productive spot this morning. Started out kind of slow. I mean, it took probably over 30 minutes there to get the first bite. But it's turned on now. I'd have liked to have been out here as the sun come up, like had baits in as the sun come up. But, you know, the older I get, the harder it is to get out of bed. I'm, I'm ashamed to say it, but I've, I've gotten lazy in my older age. <laughs> it's just one of them things. If I could get fish to bite from about 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. every day and get Mother Nature to make it about 70 degrees and sunny between 10 and 2, I'd be set. I'd have everything I need in life. <laughs> Unfortunately, that just ain't the case. Normally, the bites shut off there midday, and Mother Nature this time of year has made it so hot you can't breathe by 10, 11 o'clock. So. Let's see what we got here is that oh that's a nice flathead man nice flathead right there nice flathead over here flathead let these people take a better look at you there he says he don't want y'all looking at him he's he's not planning to be on video today didn't have his hair done right come here flatty boy i love seeing these things right here man biggest fish of the day so far and it's a flatty there it is folks look at that man <laughs> how awesome is that i love it been a while since i got me a big flathead man been, been a long time coming boy i'm happy about it gobbled him up a skipjack head <laughs> nice we will you know now that we own into august here and spawns wrapped up we're gonna start seeing these flatheads more and more frequently this in here he's he's a heifer man <laughs> he's got some weight on him for his size nice 
Well, let's let him go and cast that bait back out and see if we can get his friends. Let's let him go on this side so we can get the release shot there. We'll see you, buddy. Now, hey, go. Hey, folks, that and right there, buddy. Fist pump worthy, man. Anytime I get a flathead that size, that one's getting a fist pump. And this head here, it's not in terrible shape. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be catfishing tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and switch this bait out with a fresh one. However, I'm gonna keep this one just in case we burn through the skipjack that I've got today. We'll have it, but I wanna put a fresh one on since there's some flatheads here. This front head, this front head just got hit. Let's get us another one. Have a little break there after the flathead, but as active as it's been, I didn't think it would be long. This in here, I don't believe is a flathead. I think we got another blue right here, which is fine by me. I'm pretty much content with catching any catfish as long as it ain't channel cat. And y'all know I can't stand them things. I'd about rather get out here and get skunked than catch channel cats. But the blues and flatheads, always welcome especially them flatheads yeah that's a blue cat right there i seen he's left us the head on at least we'll we'll commend him for his efforts here let's bring you in like that before you throw that head off there and there he went he unhooked himself thanks for what you do there fish that was nice of you to unhook yourself you're hired in and out just like that. That fish unhooking himself, what he really done was he hurt his camera time, didn't he? That fish, if, if he had stuck around, let me unhook him, he'd have probably got him three or four more Instagram followers with all that extra time he'd have had on there. He missed out. Well, that bait right there, the nose of it's tore up, ain't it? Let's go in that side. We're gonna drop that and back down. Send that back down. It's been our, our back baits there that's behind us. It's got the bulk of the action today. So we'll try to keep our better quality baits on those since that's what's performing. And another one hit right here. Yeah, he's, he's going to pull now too now. Hold on. I didn't think he was that big when he hit, but now he just took off. Got a pontoon boat coming up here behind me. At least fish ought to know better than to bite when a boat's coming through. There'll be somebody else out here tomorrow sitting on this spot. <laughs> Dead gummit. He felt small, then he felt bigger. And now he kind of feels small again. I don't know what's up with this fish. Wonder if he ain't got himself some kind of Foul hooked or lassoed or something. I know he's got marbles for brains, I'll tell you that. He ain't supposed to bite when boats are going by. I'm supposed to just look like I'm out here in the middle of nowhere, don't know what the hell I'm doing when boats are going by. But he is a little better quality fish. He's a he's a fun size. That old buff on me. Had to put the buff on y'all. Get hot. That sun's beating down on me. We got us another one there. Smaller, fun size, maybe larger bank, however you want to call it. This fish is I'd make his whole world if I called him a fun size, and I'm all about pleasing these fish, so that's what I'm gonna do. But uh, yeah, we'll get him out of here. He's gone and he's ready to go. Ornery devil. But yeah, y'all, we've reached that point in the morning here, getting hot as blazes. That sun's beating down, so. I do think I'll cast another bait out there, give it a little while longer, but I'm probably here in the final 30 minutes of my trip, I'd say, because you, you reach a certain heat index inside your core, the fishing just ain't fun anymore. We almost there to me, my insides are cooking right now. So we'll get another bait on there and see if we can't snag us one more here before we go though. I think it's happening. We're gonna get us one more here, it looks like. Before we wrap this trip up, this one's ate the suspended bait. 
skipjack head. I wasn't sure if we were getting another one or not. I was about to go to the house. The bite has really slacked off here the later it's got in the morning. It was going pretty strong there. I was getting bit consistently there for a while, but as it's gotten hotter, the bite's gotten colder. I've had a good time out here today anyway. Oh, no, nope, this one here, folks. Oh, he didn't eat. He's got to fly, but he's got to fly on the side of the head. I thought he had ate it there for a second when I first saw him come up. But he's just, he snagged with it. It's a fish, though, by gosh. Congratulations, fish. Even though you're too dumb to get the hook in the mouth, you're still going to be the last one of the video. Maybe. There he goes. There we got him free. All right, y'all. The boat traffic's picking up. It's hot as blazes. You know what that means? That means it's time to go get me something to eat and go to the house. And we'll do it again real soon. How about that? I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Well, for those of you who've stuck around before we go, I think we got something on right here. We do. We've got another one on right here. Bonus fish for those of you who rode it out to the end. These three or four people fell asleep during this video. They just woke up. Didn't even know it was the end of the video, but by gosh, we've got another one right here, and this one feels pretty solid, man. Feels pretty good. This one I had the, this was also a skipjack head on the dragon rig is just sitting there. <laughs> All right. Well, always like a good bonus fish it's nice when you go to reel stuff up and you got a fish on or a rod goes down right at the very end of the trip it's always welcome surprise and for the three of you still watching hey i appreciate you even if you did fall asleep during the middle of the video and just now waking up a view is a view it all counts the same right <laughs> just youtube people can't be too picky Curious. We get this one up here. I don't know if this is a blue or a flathead. I really ain't got a good sense of it yet. He feels strong, but I ain't felt a lot of rolling. My rod didn't really, it wasn't like a hard takedown. It's just kind of setting there. Let's see if we get him up here. That's another nice flathead, man. That's another nice flathead. Well, how about that? That's a hell of a way to end the video, ain't it? Look at this. A little bit smaller than the other flathead, but that's a dang nice flatty right there, man. How about that? Woo, come on in, flatty. Now that is a bonus fish, folks. Did that, did that rod right there just get hit? By gosh, it did. Hang on, flathead. Man, I sat here didn't have nothing going on for a while now i was just talking about how the bite has slacked off and now we've had another wave of fish come through man let's get this one up here and we'll hold the flathead up my gosh <laughs> they just more of them cycled through here could probably sit out here and catch them periodically through the day and, and night it's just that time of year this this deep hole bite it just it's on at least the sections of the tennessee river that i fish this time of year it's just a consistent bite that you can count on now this one here is eight to fly that's a blue cat but he's got to fly in the mouth that one there has actually got some brains in his head he knows how to eat a bait well let's leave him set in a second and hold her flathead up Okay, well, for the three of you watching, well, the camera's crooked. Disregard that. That's a pretty good flathead, man. Bonus fish are always welcome, but boy, when they're flathead, it's that much better. <laughs> He's kind of pale looking. I'll take him though, man. That's awesome. Well, let's let him go. We're going to land our blue. And then I'm going to have to make a decision if I really want to leave or not, y'all. 
<laughs> I was hell bent on getting out of here because it's so dang hot. But now we just got we just got three fish here, real quick. I'm having to I'm having to rethink things here. All of a sudden, I may have to ride that a while longer. They may be a they may be a bonus fish to the bonus fish on this video. For the three and a half of you and still here. And that stinger fly got us one right there. He he ate it for sure. He's got that in the mouth. Can't get the dang thing out either. There we go. What do you think about that fly? You too good to eat a piece of cut bait fish? He said he's just wanting that fly. He said he heard them flies are the real deal. By gosh, they are. They catch us a lot of extra fish, whether it's just accidental, like that other one there that got snagged in the head, or that one that actually ate the dang fly. So, well, I'm in a conundrum here, y'all. I'm, I'm my inner core is about to spontaneously combust because it's hotter than damn it out here. I'm about starved too, but bite just turned back on. So I think I'm gonna. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drop base down. I'm gonna give it about 15 more minutes. And if I'm getting bit, I may make it another 15 minutes. If not, I'm gonna get the heck out of here for real this time. So anyway, if you see a bonus fish to the bonus fish, you'll know I got on them. And if you don't, well, you know I didn't catch diddly poo and I'm on my way to the house. So anyway, maybe this is goodbye for real this time. We'll see. If so, see you in the next one.